I don't even know how to start this thing. Heck. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> Hello, wonderful viewers. I'm Tatiana, as some of you probably already know. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about body image, self-love, self-confidence, all those buzzwords that get thrown around a lot these days. And they have a lot to do with me, actually. This is my testimony video. I know that there are quite a few other NCG testimony videos floating around, some of which are probably going to be much, much better than the one you have somehow decided to sit down and watch today. So to kind of start out with, our culture has a really weird obsession with physical beauty. A couple of weeks ago, I was really privileged to go to a bridal expo. And I was surrounded by all these beautiful brides with their handsome grooms, their giggling bridal parties, the sashes, the tiaras, everyone just really happy and having a great time amid all these booths for catering and dining halls and candle sets and all the things you need for your wedding, obviously. But one booth that got a lot of attention that day was a booth for liposuction. They were having a free drawing for someone to get work done for a really reduced rate. And I was looking at that and I just felt really sad. Because here were all these people, brides and grooms, their families, who should be feeling beautiful. There were these beautiful brides, these handsome grooms. The men had already been accepted. The girls had already said yes. They were loved exactly as they were. And yet they were here to change themselves, to fit some standard of how they wanted themselves to look or how the culture around them wanted them to look for what should be the day where they declare their unending love to each other. And that was a little heartbreaking. Our culture is so obsessed with bodies, with how bodies look, with how bodies act. We're so intensely materialistic that we equate someone's outside with their insides. And a lot of that leads to serious insecurities. I know I've felt a lot of them, and I'm sure many of you have as well. Maybe you felt too tall or too short. Maybe you got too many muscles or too few. Maybe as a guy, you don't have as deep a voice or as strong a jaw as another guy out there. Or as a girl, maybe you're more curvy or less curvy than the girl who sits beside you in class. We're always comparing ourselves, and oftentimes the comparisons can leave us really empty, really dry. And I've been there too. That can lead to a lot of issues with each other. We put others down to try and fill up the holes in ourselves by digging holes in other people. Maybe you'll see some of that in the comments under this video. Or we wear masks. We cover ourselves up, we act happy, we act cheerful, we act beautiful in the hopes that if we act that way long enough, we'll finally feel okay, we'll finally feel beautiful or lovable. But inside, we stay loathing each other, loathing ourselves, feeling just empty and broken and worthless. I've always struggled with my body. When I was really young, I was actually incredibly skinny, and my grandma teased me for it a lot. I was eight years old, I still wasn't big enough to get out of a car seat, and she told me everyone was going to see me as a baby unless I got big enough to get out of a car seat. And that's when I started to eat. And I thought if I just ate more and became bigger, my grandma would like me and accept me for who I was finally. And that didn't work. It actually produced the opposite effect. Because when you're a little kid, you don't really understand things like input and output, calories, healthy food versus unhealthy food. So I gained quite a bit of weight. And shockingly, the comments from my grandma actually were just as bad. I remember being about 14 and a friend said something rude to me and I was very hurt by it. And I told my grandmother about it and she said, well, honey, maybe if you were skinnier, she'd have been nicer to you. So I had terrible issues with my body growing up. I never felt like it was good enough. I never felt like I was lovable because my body wasn't lovable. And then it got worse. Because when I was about 15, I noticed some pain in my hands. And by the time I made it to a doctor a few months later, the pain was everywhere. And I was diagnosed with a rare degenerative disease called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. 
Basically, it attacks all my joints, my organs, my skin. It's all really fragile. It makes them fall apart very easily. It's very, very painful. And I hated it. I found myself hating myself even more. And even though it hurt, I made myself go to the gym, not because I wanted to get healthier, but because I was punishing my body for hurting me, for being fat, for being ugly, for being sick. I wanted to hurt my body so that it would stop hurting me back. I still had a faith life at this point, but it was a very twisted faith life. I talked to God a lot because I felt like God was the only person who could possibly love someone as hideous as me. I remember actually praying a couple times that he would give me cancer so that I would die skinny. That was a prayer I said with my own face. I said that. I went to the youth conferences a lot during this time and I heard the speakers for the women talking about their own struggles with body image. But I saw them and I saw these beautiful women by society's standards. They were skinny, they were tall, they had men who in their lives who just adored them. And they were talking about feeling ugly. And if they felt ugly, what hope was there for someone like me? Somehow I managed to work hard, to restrict my eating, to punish myself into losing enough weight. And I looked at myself in the mirror finally one day and I remember telling myself, now they're going to love you. Now, Tatiana, you're finally able to be loved. But I hated myself just as much. It was actually during this period that the suicide attempt I mentioned on a previous video happened because I just could not stand myself. Then I went to college and I decided I was going to try and be a better person, try and be a different person, be funnier, be happier, be brighter. And that worked okay. I was still hiding myself a lot. I used makeup, I used classes, I used my intelligence. I tried everything to make people like me without bringing my body, myself into the equation at all. And then after my first semester, something terrible happened. My doctor found a new medicine that she said was really going to help me feel better and stay walking. The only problem was the side effect was weight gain. And all the effort I had put into hating myself was suddenly worthless. All the time I had spent punishing myself for every calorie I ate, hating every inch of myself in the mirror, meant nothing. It meant absolutely nothing because I gained every pound back and more. And I realized, finally, that I had to stop living like this. That hating myself, that hating the body God gave me, was eventually just going to kill me. Because at this point, there was nothing I could do. No amount of eating healthy or exercising was going to stop what was happening to me. So I finally decided I was going to start being okay to myself. That started in pretty small ways. I tried to see myself maybe as God saw me, to realize that he didn't just like me because I was made in his image, but he actually really, truly liked me. Tatiana Fedorov, the fat kid with the bad haircut. Then I meditated on that and I'd go to adoration and I had some incredible experiences of God during this time. I had some beautiful consolations including one where I asked God how we could love someone like me and I rested in the spirit for the first time. If any of you don't know what that is, it's when you kind of fall over because you're so overwhelmed by the presence of God. And I just felt this infinite ocean of love just surrounding me. Like going to the beach and being knocked over by a really big wave, except the wave was God himself. And I knew that the love he had for me was the same love he had for everyone around me. And it was so powerful. And I asked him during this, you know, how could you love me? I'm fat. I have a joint disease. I have a weird round nose and a bad haircut. And I'm super weird. And every 
justification I made for my unlovableness, he met with more love just over and over again. And that drove me into maybe not a self-love yet, but a self-acceptance that maybe I'm not okay with me. Maybe I'm not my own best friend, but God kind of thinks I'm cool. So maybe there's something more to me than this outside part that everyone else sees. I also realized when I was coming here to school, I'm a pretty likable person. Maybe I'm not slim and willowy and blonde, and there are people out there who are, and God adores them too, for pity's sake. But I'm squishy, and people really like to give me hugs. And I'm funny, and I say weird stuff, and I'm super good at writing. And my teachers all like me. I'm good at giving playful insults to teachers who I actually like but pretend I don't. Hi, Luke Iyengar, how's it going? And I'm not a bad person. I'm not worthless or unlovable or disgusting just because I happen to be a little bigger than your average bear. God loves me and other people love me, so why can't I just love myself? And that was the question I started asking myself finally in junior year. I am not that bad of a person, me. It's okay. It's okay to see myself as God sees me, that I am a beautiful daughter of God. I'm someone who's worth loving, who's worth being friends with, who's worth talking to, who's worth getting up in front of a camera every once in a while and talking about being a young Catholic in the church and not being terrified to read the comments underneath the video that might say nasty things about me because I'm always worried that they're true. They're not. I am who God made me to be. The rest of it's just window dressing. I had been so focused on the gift of my body that I didn't want, I completely ignored the gifts I had been given. You know, in the Bible, there's a lot of stuff about love and relationships and marriage, but there's almost nothing about beauty, about like, the sexual attractiveness that the world tells us true beauty is. In Genesis, when Adam and Eve meet, before lust even enters the human equation, Adam sees Eve and there's something so persuasive about her very being that draws her to him and him to her, that pulls them together. And that's the presence of God in them. And that, I think, my beautiful brothers and sisters who are watching this is what really makes us beautiful. Not our muscles or our curves, not our hair color or our jaw lines, but the presence of God inside of us. We know we're the body of Christ. We know we're put on this earth to glorify God, to know him, love him, and serve him. We are called to love as the body of Christ. And when we focus on his body instead of our own, we become so much better at loving ourselves as part of that body. When his body was here on earth, it gave us a wonderful example. He fed the sick, he clothed the naked, he comforted the sorrowful, he raised the dead. He did all the things that we're called to do, and maybe Jesus wasn't that attractive. I mean, yes, we've all seen some buff crucifixes, but chances are he didn't really look like that. But he was beautiful because he was God. Holy people are always beautiful. Have any of you guys ever met an old nun? Those ladies are gorgeous. They're like sparkling from the inside out with the love of God. And I'll dare you to look at pictures of John Paul II near the end of his life as he was drooling and sick and about to die and not call him beautiful. Because he had lived his whole life in the service of God. He had become a member of the body of Christ and had used his body the way Christ did. You know, friends, we're going to get to the end of our lives, we're going to die, we're going to go to heaven, and I don't think God is going to ask us what our BMI was or what brand of fig leaves we could afford to dress our bodies in. He's going to ask us how much we loved. And if we focus on loving as the body of Christ, then that's the only body image we're going to have to worry about. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.